Hi, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be looking at the five creepiest cover-ups in history, and this is from a channel called Dark Five. Let's see what they have to offer. I'm not familiar with this channel. <laughs> Michael Hastings. In 2013, the journalism community across the nation was shaken when a tragic accident took the life of a young journalist with a promising future. But rumors quickly started circulating that the explanations could have been a cover-up for something much more sinister. Mm. Michael Hastings rose to prominence with his coverage of the Iraq War for Newsweek magazine in the 2000s. Okay. Then in 2010, he wrote a hard-hitting profile on General Stanley McChrystal for Rolling Stone magazine, prompting his resignation. Mm. A vocal critic of the Obama administration's 2013 Department of Justice investigation of political reporters, Hastings once called the imposed restrictions the beginning of a war on free journalism. Mm. His last story, titled Why Democrats Love to Spy on Americans, was published by BuzzFeed on <laughs> June 7, 2013, mere days before his mysterious passing. On June 18th, Hastings crashed his car onto a palm tree at the Hancock Park neighborhood in Los Angeles, with one witness claiming to have seen the reporter's car cruising at top speed before crashing and bursting into flames. Wow. Although investigators officially deemed the crash an accident and circulated stories about the journalist's supposed drug problem and paranoia, it wasn't long before fellow journalists and web sleuths began theorizing on an alternate version. At the time of his passing, Hastings was working on a big CIA expose, and the day before the crash, he told several family members and friends that he believed he was being investigated by the FBI. Hmm. According to some of the reporter's friends, Hastings said that he was about to go off the radar, and he also contacted one of his lawyers a few hours before the crash. Hmm. Despite vehemently denying investigating Michael Hastings, the Federal Bureau of Investigation suspiciously volunteered a file with the journalist's biometrical data when his body proved too burned to be identified. Hastings' widow, Elise Jordan, believes that his passing was due to a tragic accident caused by his agitated state and poor mental health, but others still think otherwise. Okay, so his wife According believes that. A. Clark, a former United States National Coordinator for Counterterrorism, Michael Hastings' crash is consistent with a remote attack. In an official interview, Clark stated, quote, There's reason to believe that intelligence agencies for major powers, including the United States, know how to remotely seize control of a car. So if there okay. were a cyber attack on the car, and I'm not saying there was, I think whoever did it would probably get away with it. United Flight. So you can see where a conspiracy theory would grow up from that. Um, also, you know, with the Democrats, I mean, you have conspiracy theories going all the way back to the Clinton, well, probably before the Clintons, but but with the Clintons, they, uh, a lot of people believe that they were involved in a number of murders while Clinton was governor. And a number of the people that um, he was trying to silence or maybe would have liked to have had silence, we don't know if he did or not, but they also had car crashes that were, um, you know, there were a lot of questions about it and a lot of questions about um, suspicious deaths and just you know, too many people within a short period of time. And they all had a link to him. And so here you see that again um, with Obama being president. And then, of course, uh, what was his name? Jeff Jeffrey Epstein. A lot of people don't believe that he committed suicide in his jail cell. So you, I do understand where these conspiracy theories come from. Flight 553. Boeing 737 is one of the safest aircraft ever made, mm. so whenever one crashes, it proves more shocking than usual. Even worse, when the crash happens with the wife of a Watergate conspirator inside it, the case becomes worldwide news. On December 8, 1972, a plane flying from Washington National Airport to Nebraska via the Chicago Midway International Airport crashed into a residential neighborhood destroying five houses. After being notified of the tragic accident, an investigation team from the National Transportation Safety Board quickly arrived on the scene. The investigators were stunned to find a team of FBI agents already interviewing survivors and witnesses and listening to the air traffic control tapes. Despite their initial surprise, the men let the FBI agents work, and within 24 hours, 
the National Transportation Safety Board, or NTSB, had complete control of the crash site and all relevant materials and evidence. In the end, the NTSB determined that a pilot error was the leading contributing cause of the accident. Hmm. However, the data recorder from the aircraft mysteriously stopped working during the aircraft's final 14 minutes of flight. Hmm. Because of the impact, smoke inhalation, and intense ground fire, 43 of the 61 people on board the aircraft lost their lives, and among the late passengers were an Illinois congressman, a CBS News correspondent, and Mrs. Dorothy Hunt. Hunt was the wife of intelligence officer E. Howard Hunt, one of the agents who incompetently organized the burglary of documents and wiretapping of the Democratic National Convention headquarters that set off the Watergate scandal. Many experts still claim that the CIA and the FBI joined forces to tamper with the aircraft and deliberately cause the crash. It's believed that they did it to silence Hunt, who publicly threatened to reveal government secrets if charges against her husband weren't dropped. Mm. Moreover, cyanide was found in the bodies of many victims, while one of the few surviving witnesses claimed to have heard a radio discussion of sabotage. On the day of the flight, Hunt was carrying $10,000 in $100 bills. It is said that the money was connected to the Watergate scandal, including to pay off lawyers. As a result of the theories, the 1972 accident became known as the Watergate crash. Mm. Princess Diana. Just over a year after her divorce from Prince Charles on August 31st, 1997, Diana, Princess of Wales, was the victim of a gruesome and unfortunate car crash. I was very surprised when this happened. The death of one of the most beloved women in the world became the subject of dozens of conspiracy theories and is still the topic of conversation more than 20 years later. While cruising through the streets of Paris in a BMW trying to avoid the paparazzi, the vehicle crashed inside the Pont de l'Alma tunnel. Still, none of the 20 or so traffic cameras in or near the tunnel recorded footage of the fatal collision. Mm, interesting. The driver, Henri Paul, and Diana's boyfriend, businessman Dodi al Fayed, both perished at the scene, while her bodyguard, Trevor Reese Jones, survived. Diana would soon lose her life after receiving unsuccessful medical care, leaving her two young sons behind. Although the initial French investigation stated that the crash occurred due to the erratic behavior of the paparazzi following the car, conspiracy theories still abound. One of the most supported theories surrounds a pregnant Diana who might have been targeted for not obeying the royal family's rules. Former MI6 employee Richard Tomlinson claimed in a sworn statement to the French magistrate in May of 1999 that his agency had deliberately planned Diana's murder. Hmm. He also claimed that the driver of the car and one of the bodyguards were agency moles. The most vocal supporter of this theory is Egyptian businessman Mohammed Al-Fayed, the father of Diana's boyfriend Dodi, who firmly believes that Diana and his son were attacked for political reasons, as the royal family did not want a royal link to a non-Protestant child. Hmm. It's kind of strange because she was no longer part of the royal family at that point. She had given up her title. I mean, I guess because her sons um, were princes, but still, it's a bit much. I don't know. Gareth Williams. When Welsh MI6 codebreaker and fiercely private citizen Gareth Williams failed to show up to work for a week, his colleagues called the police. Then, on August 23, 2010, Gareth was found in a security service safe house on suite bathroom, naked and cramped inside a red bag padlocked from the outside. Although the initial inquest found that his passing was unnatural and likely criminally meditated, met detectives determined one year later that it was accidental, despite the strange circumstances. It's accidental? According to the official police report, Williams's unfortunate demise was part of a bizarre S&M practice. There was little to no evidence in the apartment to support such a conclusion, including no fingerprints. Also, an expert failed over 300 times to replicate the feat that could have caused the accident. However, because of Williams's work in the murky world of espionage, several theories abound. Wow. According to those closest to Williams, including friends, family, and fellow MI6 colleagues, Gareth's murder was a plot by a third party skilled in the dark arts of spy work. As expressed by the family's lawyer, Gareth could have been a victim of sedation or poisoning by Al-Qaeda extremists, Russian Secret Service hitmen, or other dangerous assassins. But such theories could not be proven due to the advanced state of decomposition of the body. 
Another unconfirmed mm-hmm. source claimed that Williams was preparing for an undercover operation at the time, helping the United States National Security Agency trace money laundering routes used by international organized crime groups, including Moscow-based mafia cells. Over 10 years later, in February of 2021, the case received attention again when experts were unable to extract a DNA profile on a single hair found on Williams' hands that did not belong to him. The case was officially reopened in June, and Gareth Williams' forensic evidence will be re-examined once more, still looking for the truth. Mm. Something. RMS Titanic. Of the 1,517 souls to perish from the tragic sinking of the RMS Titanic on April 15, 1912, three were of particular interest to America's future. Benjamin Guggenheim, Isidore Strauss, and John Astor, some of the wealthiest men in the world. Right. However, despite having a ticket, the very owner of the ship skipped the trip at the very last minute, and many believe him to be the cause of the sinking. Really? I never heard of that. Although RMS Titanic was registered as British, American-born tycoon John Pierpont Morgan was the valid owner of the ship, and his company was the controlling trust and owner of the White Star Line. Oh, I didn't know that. The theory suggests that Morgan had a motive to sink the Titanic, because the other three influential Americans with a ticket had fiercely opposed his idea for a centralized banking system, the wow. United States Federal Reserve. According to several theorists, Morgan swapped the Titanic at the last minute for her sister ship, Olympic, which had recently suffered severe damage, herding all three unknowing young businessmen into a trap. It is said that Morgan took his secret to the grave as he passed on not long after the Titanic sinking, burying what could be a hidden truth of one of the most unfortunate accidents of the 20th century. Hmm. All those people died so he could have revenge. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like. That's a bit much. Uh, I wouldn't put a bass him. I mean, he was known for a lot of, I don't know, bad things, you know. The rich, they think they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. Um, That's a shame. I remember the Diana one, though, because that was my time period where I was growing up. And I remember watching her wedding and the day that she died, my sister had called me and said, did you hear about Princess Diana? And I thought she was talking about, you know, everything that was going on with Dodie. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, what are you talking about? And she's like, she's dead. And I was just shocked. I really was. And I wound up watching, you know, the entire funeral. And it was a, it was a sad day. It was a sad day. I mean, of course, I didn't know her or anything. I'm not British, but it was a, a part of my life growing up. So that did actually have a little, I don't want to say it affected my life. It didn't affect my life, but, you know, it meant something to me. I do have a very clear memory of that. It's one of those things like, you know, where were you when you found out Princess Di died? Where were you on 9-11? That sort of thing. And I have a very clear memory of where I was when I heard about her death. All right. Well, I do thank you for visiting my channel and watching the show with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I found that very interesting. Um, this channel was called Dark Five. I've never watched this channel before. They were pretty good. So we'll maybe watch them again um, another time. All right. Well, again, thank you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.